ready for any opportunity to come, honestly, to play real basketball because that is my goal, to play yeah. basketball. I, internet's cool, entertainment's cool, but that's fame is not what I, I really want to hoop. This is like you said, I love it, it's fun. <laughs> Oh man, welcome to another episode of Analysis Podcast, man. So happy to do all these things. I'll, I'll, you guys will be following my journey of learning things and learning new cultures through my podcast. You guys are amazing. Thank you guys so much for the support. And again, you know, we have a special guest and the intro number four from Orlando, Florida, Julia. The handles, new man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, that's what you, hey, that's what you got to talk. Come on now, come on now. Give so, it up. Appreciate man, the handles, how, how did you get that nickname? Uh, I used to play like in my dad's basketball leagues all the time. And you know, like, I mean, I'm not sure. I think all the parents and stuff called me handles. <laughs> like I used to play for one of his teams he had in the league and all the parents, kids, just call me handles. That's all I did was dribble, I guess, <laughs> oh. at a young age. Oh man, how do you how do you like the intro? What do you think about the intro? It's it was good. great, man. It was great. <laughs> I, I'm trying. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on it, man. I'm working it's on like, it, brother. Uh, NBA level intro. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I wish. Hey, so you know, you know, I got drafted in 2014, right? Yes. And um, I was actually in the U.S. the year before, playing in the G League. Then I get drafted to the NBA in 2014. Mm. But the same year, let me make sure I have this right, so I don't, so I don't, so I don't mess it, so I don't mess it up. So the Tampa Bay Times, right? Yes. Label you. Yes. As the most marketed twelve-year-old in the world. Wow. Yeah, I remember that article. Yeah. I what do you think about that? Right? About the article yeah. or the, the I'm saying, that heading of the article? The, the, both. Okay. <laughs> I remember the article wasn't great. It was like, really? it, yeah, it showed me in a bad light. I remember that article, but. Uh, it, that guy came with me around to my house and everything. I was 12, bro. <laughs> and he like was like uh, talking about like uh, I was marketed, but wasn't that good and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it, it was cool seeing that though. Like uh, a lot of people sent it to me, but for me, you know, no press is bad. So it was cool. It was real good. I, I mean, at the time, a lot of newspapers and stuff were doing things on me. So I kind of ignored it, but the heading was great. <laughs> the hey, title was great. Yeah, I was just, yeah. honest with you, I never read the article. The, the only thing I saw was the, the title and I said, oh man, I was, you know, I was doing my research. Yeah. And I thought about it, I was like, man, he really was because I could see, I could see videos of you, highlights and you dribbling, going yeah. through people and like tween, 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 like uh -huh. across. Yeah. And then like, we'll see videos even, even overseas mm -hmm. too. So I was like, oh man, this kid like, yeah, you know, and, they were, and then you were 12 at the time. Yes. Do you, First of all, how did you start playing basketball? Uh, my dad. That's how I remember. I don't. Like, hear, I don't know if it's true. Did you? Is it really? Is it true? You started when you were three years old. Yeah, uh, I was told I was started at three. I okay. remember, um, <laughs> you know, always playing with my dad. Uh, you know, outside, he'd always uh, work out with me. Uh, always like, he, I call him the shot doctor because everybody that he teaches to, to shoot it can really like make 40, 50 in a row, has good percentages. But no, nah, um, he basically gave me the game. Like ever since I. Came out, my mom, like, I just been playing basketball, I feel like. Uh, I've been in the gym, he's been refing games, coaching teams, and I just been around it my, the whole time. So <clears throat> I got into it by just being around my father, him like, uh, probably him having to take me there yes. to watch me as well as work. And, you know, he had leagues growing up, like, uh, you know, like for kids, he would have like a league uh, for a bunch of AU teams would come play in that league. And yes. yeah, so basically my father, man, it was all basketball. and. I just grew up around it and man, I fell in love with it myself. Oh my God. I was, you know, I kind of, you know, got to do my my reading and research for every guest. And I yeah. like, I always feel excited to learn new things. Yeah. And I learned, it was like, and I don't know if this is true. That's why, you know, I always want to confirm with you. So your dad is a history teacher? Uh, He was. Yeah, he was. He was. And, I, and I heard, I heard, you know, that your mom was, uh, that your dad was a history teacher and, and that your mom served in the Navy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. How was that? How was like, Mm -hmm. Did he ever talk to, talk to you about, about that experience? Uh, yeah. So um, my mom was in the Navy uh, before I was, well, I believe before I was born, I believe so. Um, she was in there for four or five years. Uh, really? But uh, I know that because of that, oh, actually it was before I was born. Because I was born in Augusta, Georgia because of that. She was based in, I think, Fort Gordon it was. Okay. Um, and then uh, 
yeah, so I, we moved to Orlando when I was like two or three, but yeah, I mean, I heard stories that my dad used to drive my mom down to the camp, like in Pensacola, uh, like nine hour drive just to go see her because he couldn't stay on the, you know, the, the naval base or yes. whatever. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't hear too many stories, but I know that my dad like wrote her letters every week and, you know, kept her like, uh, wanted to be in there, you know, kept, oh, kept her motivated man. That's, for the Navy. That's, uh, that's then, love right there. That's yes, love sir. Right there. <laughs> Oh, okay. So then, and then you moved to Orlando. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think I, I was like two or three. I, I don't remember, but I was told. <laughs> Do you, so, you know, one of the reasons, like, I really want to like talk to you and pick your brain mm -hmm. into this, like new kids coming in now, yes, sir. you, uh, and the AAU and the AAU system. And then, you know, just basketball in general mm -hmm. and, you know, and the ups and downs, Yes. you know, and the ups and downs, which is really important. So then, you, did you play for any AAU teams? Did you? How did you? Uh, so my dad had a few AAU, uh not a few AAU teams, but we uh, when I wanted to play, he would start a team. Like uh, oh, okay. he would just start his own team, and then we'd go play some of the tournaments. I played uh, for a couple other teams sometimes, like Showtime in Orlando is a big team. I played each one, teach one a few times, but never played on a solid AAU team because I always had like uh, talk shows or something to be at, so I couldn't commit to practices and stuff like that. So I just played high school ball and then did like a bunch of events and like like media stuff during the summer. And oh, and stay in the gym and get better. Cause my dad, uh, growing up, he always like was telling me how like, all these kids always play all these games on the weekend. And, but you, you getting this work and getting a thousand shots up every yes. day rather than maybe 15 in each game. That's what, so he compared it to that. But so yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much. Now that, now that you said something about the, you know, the talk shows and the media stuff, mm. So, you know, I was going through all of these things and I read, man, you was in Good Morning America. Yes, sir. At Ellen DeGeneres, <laughs> Steve Harvey. <laughs> and you went to all of, like all of those shows. Yeah. How was it? How, how did you how did you man, it was it was cool. It was very cool. I was nervous as heck though. I was very nervous. Like, I mean, the most nervous thing in the world for me. Like I would, I couldn't sleep at night because I'm worried about like how scared I'm gonna be on, on the talk show. But really? most How of all, old were you there at the time? I was uh, 11 years old, uh, actually, when I went on my first one. It was in Chicago at uh, Steve Harvey. He cool. I met him in, uh, mm -hmm. we kind of had like the Goba events in Abu Dhabi. So I met him okay. when he was there. Man, I told him, you should, you should have us yeah. in a family feud. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely <laughs> should. And then cool. I was just, obviously, I was just joking. I would be so nervous too. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, but it was cool. Um, they definitely, that was my first talk show. So, or rather, Talk show, I'd say, is it talk? Yeah, yeah, I mean. Yeah, but uh, it was my first show, so, you know, he definitely gave me a good experience. You know, he, uh, he had Derrick Rose give me, like, like I don't know, a bunch of bull stuff. Derrick Rose. Yeah, and then he made it a great, uh, you know, great experience. And then after that, everyone made me come out to their show <laughs> at 11. That was, it was kind of funny. I mean, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I played basketball and I played on a high school team. And that was why I'm like, I was doing pretty good. <laughs> Average yes. like 13 assists yes. on a varsity team. So that's pretty much why, but it was kind of crazy, yeah. man. But by, <laughs> by the way, you're the first, the youngest actually player to ever reach the 1000 points. Wasn't yeah, it? yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> it was crazy. It was, I remember it like it was yesterday. Like uh, they always had each thousand points I hit. They had like a big night every time. I would never know. It was like always like a random, you know, if I hit a three, a random Blair, like, oh, you reached two or three. That's, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy how they did it. Oh, man, it's a, it's a good feeling. And I can only imagine. Did you did you ever feel a lot of pressure? Definitely. Uh, I definitely did. But uh, I think I just a lot of times ignored it and just kept, like, working. My dad always, you know, it's all I know is playing basketball and uh, being around my family. So I definitely definitely felt pressure, still do. And But it's no – nothing's going to, like – relieve that pressure but God or in working out, you know, and preparing for the next level, preparing for what's in front of me, you know. Yes. And then okay, so then you from high school, you went to high school mm -hmm. and then and then college and then, you know, decided to do yeah. things. So how how what, so could you walk me through those like four or five years of you kind of deciding and what what are you gonna do? Yeah. Okay. So in high school, uh I probably didn't I mean, I never really thought about until like 11th grade. That's when I got thought, like, where am I going to be the next few years? Uh, but before that, yes. before that, I'm going to be honest, I don't I don't really know what I was uh, going to do after. I know I was going to play basketball somewhere and do stuff and 
you know, be successful. But I didn't really think about it before, until like 11th grade. So I was uh, thinking about colleges and stuff. But, you know, at the time uh, I was getting paid for things. So uh, the NIL deals weren't like they weren't a thing. So yes. a bunch of colleges weren't like on me. I had a couple. I had uh, UTSA, USF, UCF, hometown school, uh, and a couple more. But more importantly, I had a couple of deals to go overseas. Um, I had a deal to go to the NBL, but I had an agent that worked for Club Sports actually. And, uh, you know, he had a whole deal. He was talking to the coach and everything in the NBL. And then I don't know, it fell through. Um, so that was my plan after uh, high school, really. But yeah, but four or five years, I wouldn't really worry about that. I was just enjoying, like, I, I could say being more of a kid in high school than I was as a kid. Cool. Yes. <laughs> Mark, I, I, it was I, weird. <laughs> No, no, I, I totally understand, man. Mm -hmm. You being such a young age and getting so much exposure yeah. and trying to navigate all of these things. And at the same time, you know, on the court, you're trying to want to uh, use your tools and, you know, use the potential, use all these things. But I, at the same time, outside the court, you're getting, you're, you're, you're moving in the speed of light outside the court, <laughs> if, if, per se, you know? Like mm -hmm. outside the court, you're moving fast. Mm -hmm. Like brands are coming, deals are coming. And then you know, I kind of I've never I've never watched any of the episode. I kind of watched some mm -hmm. clips from like the the web yeah. family episode. Yes, sir. With, with your family and all these things are mm. coming into place, fat way faster than the craft, way faster than mm. you know the the the, the basketball part. Yeah, got you. Of it. Yeah. Do you do you think that that could hurt you, or do you think it's like it was cool? It didn't matter. Uh, I think that you know. I mean, I thought always thought it was a blessing because, you know, I worked hard as a, like a yes. kid and my dad worked hard as well. Caught my rebounds every day. He still does. And um, so it's definitely, I always thought about it as a blessing um, and that it would it help me get to uh, where I wanted to be. Um, but in some ways, it definitely, definitely hurt in uh, some well, ways. Why? Because uh, sometimes it's perceived a different way than, than who I actually am or um, situations are blown up and twist and turned and. Uh, certain things that could like turn certain things, certain people off or whatever. Yes. The, the internet's crazy. <laughs> so that's why I'm, you know, doing a couple of things to put my own narrative out there, starting a couple of things, starting a YouTube channel, a couple more things like that. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's great. And I, I would love to ask you about the YouTube channel. What, what, what is it going to be called? Uh, so I'm not sure what it's going to be called yet, to be honest. Uh, but we have another show probably coming out soon or, you know, in the process of being made, uh, kind of like Beat Bobby Flay show. It's gonna be, that show's gonna be called like Beat Julian Newman. It's like basketball, like but one-on-one -on -one type okay. thing. Yeah, it's not fully, uh, you know. So in the world, we, so we're getting like a spoiler, works. we're getting a sneak peek. Exactly, oh, yeah, definitely. I like that, this is, this is what the show is all about. Yes, yeah, sir. Get the inside <laughs> information, you know? Yes, Whoever's sir. listening and watching. Um, okay, so you do all these things, right? And then all of a sudden you make your viral moment and highlights, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. into a business. Mm. You know, I went to your profile like like on Instagram, right? And I don't want to mention you know your partners or whatever, you know, because yeah. on the show. But you had so many like partnerships, mm, and sponsorships. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes, did, did those come through, you know, your 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 media, your outlet, or through just basketball? Uh. So I say um, a lot of them came through, happened in high school too, through basketball. And then a lot of them came from just, you know, being like, just, I don't know. I've been in life for so long. So like a lot of people. Uh, are you only for, 21 years old? Uh, 21. 2001. You're yeah. 21 years yeah. old, man. Yeah, man. Definitely. <laughs> it was, yeah, only 21. But it's uh, like a lot of people, they forget that I actually play basketball as well. So, yes. you know, uh, but I think, okay. Through media, I became like a media guy through basketball, in my yes. opinion. So, uh, a little bit of both, definitely. Um, a couple came in high school, but then, you know, when you were allowed to get like more and it's okay, like, because it was very like in high school that a lot of companies don't want to pay you because they, you know, they, they don't want to mess up your college opportunity or, or uh, stuff like that. So, but I never after, thought about that because, you know, overseas we, we go straight pro. So yeah. It's not like exactly. it's never yep. a situation like that. So yeah, that's what, uh, after high school is when mm. a lot of the deals came really. Um, <clears throat> but the reality show started in high school, I believe. I think about junior year. So yeah. It was, what, was it, what did you think about the first time when you started? The show? Yeah. 
uh, I was excited to start it. To, to, okay. I was very excited, you know, get you have your own show and stuff like that. Also nervous and scared for certain things. And uh, first of all, did you guys get paid? Uh, <laughs> that, I mean, obviously, you can. I don't want to put you on the spot, but I'm just saying, you know, no, you should be. You, you, know? you definitely. Sh I mean, we got. Uh, you had to say the number. No, but. I know. Uh, but we definitely didn't get what we deserved at all. Like, I mean, I like. Okay, we're not saying no company names, I guess, but we got, in my opinion, treated very bad <laughs> uh, throughout the like the whole time. But you know why? Why? Um, I don't know. So. A lot of, I'm not sure if a lot of people realize, but Overtime was like, they were known, but they weren't that big until our show made them huge. Like obviously a, a lot of other things, they're big in many other ways now, but our show was their biggest thing. If you go on YouTube and look at views and <laughs> look at a lot of stuff, our show is like the biggest thing they have and, and like yes. probably like will have, like because it surpasses their numbers by a lot. So, I mean, uh, the treatment was just, you know, it's not like you'd imagine. Um, How like, old were you there at the time? I was like, I believe we started at 16. I was 15 or 16 when Dang. we started that. And I mean, I was up till like 3, 4 a.m. doing confessionals and going to school and practice at 7 a.m. right after. So like. So what, is, what is that? So, so explain that to me. You know, I want you to treat me yes. like I'm a kid because I don't okay. know nothing about no. this thing. Gotcha. And I'm learning. Okay. So when you say confessionals, like what, what, do you, what does that mean? Uh, So like. They would take, all right, so confessionals, uh, to my knowledge, are um, in a reality show, like, you know, when they cut to the person, like, basically being a narrator about what's going on. Like, oh, in that game, I I dunked on that guy, and then he yes. pushed me. Like, you know, you're just talking mm -hmm. about it. Or, and then give, but that's basically what that is. That takes, that's the annoying part about a reality show, in my opinion. I'm not sure for other people. <laughs> but that's the part that I hate, because you're there for, like, five, six hours just talking about stuff that is scripted or stuff that you went through like you know oh not oh, so let me let me let me yes. just pick what on something that you said right mm -hmm. you said scripted yeah do you was it was everything real it was like how, how did what did the jnc say oh it was like cap was it cap yeah. it, was, it, was real, man. it was a lot of it was cap bro but really? nah, i mean the we played basketball we we were good we played on a high level that you said i mean i mean we we were playing at a high level and um but a lot of like the conflicts and yes. the arguments and that was all made up and stuff like that. A lot of the stuff was cap for sure. But uh, yeah, definitely it was a cool experience. But uh, we didn't get treated that well. <laughs> yeah, but by the way, to, for the audience, you know, he's, this is a global podcast. We got people from back home, Europe, Africa, everywhere, listening at cap. Yeah. By the way, meaning that, you know, lie or misinformation. <laughs> I just want to put this out there. Yes, sir. But that's what uh, cap means. Don't mm -hmm. go out there and look and uh, say, well, oh, what is the initial yeah. for cap? Like, no, don't do that. It definitely was scripted. If that That's the better. That it, the, the show was scripted for sure. Like uh, mm -hmm. the scenes were, you know, we knew about the scenes before they were happening and stuff like that. Like, or we go to fun spot yeah. just to record, not to have fun. You know what I mean? <gasps> like we go ride the go-kart and, and then. Like, I don't know if I'm falling too much, but like, yeah, it's like. I don't know. I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I, no, I, I don't hey, care listen, either. You don't, you don't, I don't care. Hey, I don't, if you have a, you know, I don't know what you have with them. I don't want to put you yeah, on the spot no, of like that. No, I'm not going with them or anything, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So, it, it beats the purpose of a reality show because mm. it's actually called a reality show, but yeah. Now, you know, every reality show you see is not reality. They, can't be. Yeah, I mean. That, that. That drink she threw on her face was fake. <laughs> that was <laughs> fake. I want to say duh, but yeah, you're mm -hmm. right. You're, you're absolutely right, 100%. Mm -hmm. So was there any scene that they, they asked you to do and you were like, no, I don't want to do this. Like, this, this is not cool. Uh, Yeah, I definitely say so. Uh, a lot of times, and a lot of times my dad, you know, he's very outspoken, so he let them know uh, when when he wasn't when, when comfortable doing something. or He's actually like executive producer of it. They, okay. let, they would send him... The whole show when it's once it was edited and he'd make his changes and okay you know stuff like that but yeah man, this is great oh my god um just you know i'm sorry i'm asking about the show a lot nah, just because I'm, I'm you know i'm definitely pick me, i want you're making me remember it i want to i, I want to <laughs> get my notes right for yeah. it honestly um uh, but this was this all shoot in uh orlando or good question um so the majority of it no the beginning of it was shot in orlando i could say uh the beginning was shot in orlando and then I think we flew to Canada one time and a couple other, you know, vacation episodes we had. But yeah, it was mainly shot in Orlando at first uh, at, our, at our school. And then then they wanted to move to Vegas for uh, 
like they wanted to move the show to Vegas. And also the, well, part of, cause I wanted to go to Vegas to work out with uh, Coach Buck, his name is. Um, so I was working out with him. I was getting ready to go play uh, at the end uh, the NBL at the time. And you know, he had a couple, uh, he was cool with Mark Cuban. And mm. me and Mark Cuban, uh, when I, since, since, since I was young, we used to email each other. And like, uh, he used to help me out with Prodigy brand and tell me yeah. what to do and to go into sports, sports uh, Dick Sporting Goods and tell the manager you want your stuff in there. What like, about Mike Cuban? Yeah. Bro. Man, dude, just, yeah. Just, let's put this on a social clip, please. Mr. Mike Cuban, you're a great guy, man. Definitely a great guy, for sure. He, every email I've ever sent to him, he's replied back and gave me <laughs> advice. And yeah, it's, it's really insane. He actually, uh, he I think an article in MSNBC, he actually spoke about me talking about before the NIL, before the Ignite stuff came out, Ignite and uh, the OTE stuff, before all that, he was saying how like, you know, cause I was marketed and known like a lot in high school. He was saying how um, people need that, like our, how we branded, how Prodigy, how we had a brand. Not only was I known, but we had like a clothing brand and a, how you said we turned yes. it into a, a business. Yes. Um, he was talking about that in an article and how like, like uh, the leagues need stuff like that, you know, like we need players to start their own uh, companies and basically, or we need known people like coming out of high school. And that's what's starting now. People are starting to do that. And yeah, it was crazy. He mentioned to me in the article and, you know, it's just a compliment day. right there. Yeah, man. definitely. Is, uh, you know, he's a, he's a great businessman, great person. Yeah. You know, up to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. I've heard, he told me people. stay ready. Like he told me he gonna give me a shot in the G League team and everything. He, yeah, he told me, when I'm ready, he's going, I'm ready, I'm getting, I'm ready, so. Mm -hmm. let's gonna, see, let's yes, do, sir. Let's do this, let's do this. Definitely. Um, okay, I wanna, I wanna go to, I wanna ask you about like a, like a clip I saw. This was, was years ago. It wasn't mm -hmm. even now that I was doing my. Yeah. I think it was years ago. So it's a clip of you playing against IMG Academy. By the way, I went to IMG Academy. Oh, wow. Not, not, I, didn't, I didn't go there to school or anything like that, but I spent like kind of like a, like a month uh, there some point just getting my my uh my body ready and all these things mm -hmm. you know, not just basketball it was like all the other sports too so but um you know brandon in florida like that, that's where i went I remember. yeah yeah that's where i was it was years years ago wow um and it was just clip man you just play one against five man. yeah <laughs> you, you just play one against five you trying you know you're trying to shoot i know they they, they 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 like trapping and they're yeah. like uh -huh. leading you all the way to the big and yeah all these things yep what was the what was the like the feel the feeling after the game? Oh man, that's a great question. No one's ever asked me that. that man, I felt like the that's world. Why we, that's why we here. Man. Yeah, I felt like the world was over after a game like that for real. Because you know, um, I was highly touted. You know what I mean? How how, Not, how, how old were you? At the time? Uh, I started playing at IMG. I think uh, maybe freshman sophomore. But there, I mean, there was games where like I had like forty on them a couple times, and then there's games where I had you know. With, like that, that's what I'm saying. Clips look, you can make it look bad, you can make it look good, but yeah. there was only one bad game I had uh, versus IMG in my opinion. But uh, after a bad game like that, after the game, I felt terrible. Like the world was over for real. Cause you know, basketball is my life literally. So, I mean, if I like have a bad game or something, that's not the, like literally the end of the world. But I mean, that's the saddest thing for me. Like besides, yeah. you know, death or something like that. <laughs> no, no, not good wood, man. Hey, listen, I, <laughs> nah, for sure. No, no, no. I, you know what? So my advice, I'm saying, is that like you gotta, you gotta feel that. I'm saying you gotta feel. Yeah. Like, I, I remember, uh, like, oh, you know, through even national team, mm -hmm. you know, lost games, and it's like, man, it's like the end of the world, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's it's, it's a step. Mm -hmm. It's a step forward. I gotcha. promise you, it's a step forward. Yeah. You know, and I, and I felt that when, you know, uh, with my family, and as a family and as a player, I remember when we, we went and we lost in the bubble. You know, okay. we, we was in the bubble and we lost it. We were the team we, that was projected to have like 70, like 69 or 69 wins. Wow. Almost 70, like it was crazy. Yeah. We, we were in the game, we was like 48 and 48 and three, 48 and five, something like wow. that. It was, it was insane. And then COVID hit and we go to the bubble. Mm. And all of a sudden, they, it's a different ball game, and, and you know, and we, and we, and then we got bounced in the what the second round, the semifinals. Yeah, and we kept that. You have to keep it. You know, you mm. you have to feel, own it, feel it, but you don't have to like don't dwell on it. Don't don't be like, oh yeah, and it's the end of the world. Like it's really not. It's, it's okay. Yeah, definitely. The next one. Appreciate. How that. how's your how's your like the the family? How's your how's the family? Um, 
family's good, man. They're all uh, my sister. She's actually uh, in season right now. She plays uh, for Liberty High School in Vegas, or well, Henderson, Nevada. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, she just came back from an ACL injury, actually. So she oh, she tore it um, this summer, like this past summer. Yeah. And during the AAU game, and uh, coming off a screen, she came off a screen, shot the three, and the girl undercut her, and she tore it like that. Wow. And uh, she came back pretty quick. She was working really hard on it, like every day therapy, every day getting it worked on. And, you know, that's where she proved to me because everybody had a, a thought of, like, does she really like basketball? But she, no, she loves basketball. But maybe, like, like more than You guys a have lot great of chemistry, by the way. Like, I see yeah. clips like that. And, you Appreciate know, we, you know how we are as a family, too. We're really yeah. tired. We're close. Yes. Man, fun fact. I, I thought I saw a fun fact that she uh she was she appeared in Queen Latifah's show, she right? She did, yes, yep. She how did. Come, how how did how did that happen? So I mean, I think that's the same this, this along the same lines of she was in third grade actually playing varsity basketball. It was so it was a little, I think it was a little like un, it was more unreal than me. <laughs> She's in third grade putting up numbers, scoring and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Yeah, She's very small player. In uh in the Queen Latifah thing, I believe uh because Queen Latifah played basketball, I believe. Um, okay. So, she probably that's probably why she had her on because she played ball and she probably liked the little girl and stuff like that. Uh, but um, yeah, I believe they had a little basketball hoop and they mm-hmm. and then they interviewed her and you know wanted to pick her brain and see how it was to be eight years old playing with seventeen, eighteen year olds. <laughs> yes, I would imagine too. So. It's yeah, it's crazy. So, but so I get I get the like. You know, everybody has been treating you had fans. So you literally have had fans since you were ten, since you were eleven. Yeah, definitely. Did you do you have any like crazy fan stories? Um <sighs> crazy fan stories. You, uh, you know, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Nah, you know, say anything, you know? nah I think uh I definitely do. I just gotta think about them. Like it's definitely crazy fan stories. Definitely a couple. Um well, I was telling uh, your brother actually the yeah. other day, uh, Alex. I was telling him uh, how, uh, like, this happened a few times. People would take a picture with me and seem like the biggest fan ever, and like, you know, uh, dap me up, tell me how they've been watching me, this, this and that. And then I go on, or my friend would show me later on Instagram, hit the person that posted it, and it uh, would say, "Oh, uh, he's trash" or <laughs> something unreal, like you know, because in person you were like genuinely a fan, like. You know, but on the internet, it's, it's something else. Yeah. Oh no, that's that's so that's that's lame. That's a I guess a little fan story. I gotta think a little deeper for something crazy, but no, it's it's possible. It's yeah, yes, because mm. I mean, why do why do you like think about this, right? Yeah, somebody approaches you, and you get this all the time, and people are coming. It's like, hey, yeah. Julian, can we get a photo of this that? And then you take a time from your day and mm-hmm. say like, you know what? Like, I wanna, I wanna be there for people. Right? And yeah. then somebody turns turns around. And do yeah, that. you should, you know, just just be. There's some like ninety percent good people out there. Yeah, and they're really like really fan of you and fan of you, not just for now, just forever. Wow, throughout everything you do, you know, I see that all the time. I see that with my family. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's it's whatever. But do you think you've ever had like, you know, from a young age like? I don't want to say hate. Hate is a strong word, but let's say like people being jealous of like mm-hmm. what you're doing from a young age or like the attention you're getting. Definitely, yeah. Really, I, I, I I'd say a lot. You know, um, like you said, it's a lot of love too, though. So, but yeah. definitely a lot of hate for sure. True. Or, or, from, or I would like to say from teammates, not hate, not but, hate. Um, jealousy, jealousy, or en- yeah. envy, envy, yeah. envy. Yep. The, the, for teammates, from teammates, or just teammates, classmates, some family members, like everybody, from friends. I believe like everybody around yeah, me. You is gonna, yeah, you got to you ain't got to you know, you're going to say names, but really. Yeah. No, for sure. Um even teachers. For sure, for sure. Like it was it was crazy. Like I would come back from a I I remember this actually. I was in 5th grade, 11 years old. I came back from a Steve Harvey show. And uh one of the classmates was asking me about Chicago. I wasn't talking about the show or anything cuz that wasn't cool to us. We were 11, you know what I mean? We don't watch talk shows. <laughs> so uh it was just talking about Chicago cuz he asked me about Chicago and the teacher allowed she says no one cares about your trip to Chicago the 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 like goes on and on and I'm a 11 teacher? yeah i remember that a teacher like a 30 year old teacher i remember and i told my dad he made a big deal and he had a meeting about it and stuff but yeah teachers would make comments like that and you know grown men and I mean, obviously i learned to not care about you it you can't but. be nah 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 that's not cool man you can't be <laughs> 
you know, you can't be not envying, but you be like, like you know, thinking yeah. like this way towards a ten year old, eleven yeah. year old. He's like, you should be happy. Just be like, okay, you know, just yeah. Always have your mom and dad close to you. You know, you're going give me advice. This. Give <laughs> you advice. Yeah, not trying to put me down because I didn't. I didn't call myself like the best basketball player. You know, I just played basketball and people thought it was cool that I was playing on the high school team and I was good and I was scoring. Like, so I'm confused really like why yeah. adults would do that. But you know, uh, I get why the world does it because people hate on you, people hate on everybody. Oh, yeah, everybody, everybody. So yeah. I, I get why people do it's it a, in a sports is, sense. But yeah. as a kid, that doesn't make sense. As a kid, But nowadays when they hate on me, I get it now. But yeah, it, because you're, you're yeah. a little bit older, a little bit more mature. Uh, you know? But I was 11 and that's kind of uncalled for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you, did you think like that altered the way you saw school or the way you were treated in school? It definitely altered the way I seen school. Like, and it's sad, it's kind of sad, but I, it made me not want to like go to school like that. And I'm the school I went to anyway, if I'm being honest, education was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad. Why? You, and it, why? Why? Uh, why? Uh, I'm not sure. Like uh, I say, Florida doesn't have the best education anyway. The state of Florida, I don't think it has even close to the best education in America. You know, and the reason I'm asking, I'm not from here, so I'm just yeah. trying to understand. Like, no, 100. Uh, percent Um, to my knowledge, I think they have terrible education. Everyone talks about it, but I went to a private school in a, not a fortunate private school. Yeah. You know, uh, like a private school that had a tile floor gym and stuff like that. Okay. So you know, the teachers were. It was a job to them. They didn't really teach anything. Like we all, we could talk in class. We could do whatever we wanted. It was no discipline, I'd say, in the classrooms. Only to things that they wanted to discipline. You know what I mean? Things that mess with them personally. Not they had no morals. You know, but uh, not to talk down on school no, or anything. No, but, but, yeah. but but yeah, it definitely cool. altered the way I thought about education for sure. I just wanted to play basketball and prove people wrong. Definitely, it's crazy. You you had. Uh, I would say you've taken advantage of every opportunity basketball has bought for you, and that's right. Yeah, that's the that's the great part. And you keep doing it, so it's it's good. At the same time, you have the love and the passion for basketball, so you will find your way. Yes, I'm hundred percent. So I'm guessing one of your dreams is to play in the NBA. Yes, sir. Yes, definitely. So do you think the NBA is hard? Oh, I know it's hard for sure. <laughs> definitely, I respect what y'all do, hundred percent. Definitely. Uh, I think it's very hard, but I don't think it's out of reach, man. I think uh, nothing's out of reach. Yeah, man. nothing. For sure. Um, I've well, let nobody tell you otherwise. But definitely, nothing's out of reach. Definitely. Uh, yeah, man. I've been. I'm definitely just staying ready, trying to get stronger. Um, right now, this one focused on gaining weight, so you know I can hold my ground defensively and all that, which I I can now. So like when you look at me, you can be like, oh okay, like not nah, look at me like oh, he's scrawny, he's skinny. I want you to look at me and be like, you know. He look like he locks somebody up. Okay. <laughs> Even though I, I I play great good defense now, but I can step it up and uh, nah. But I'm just staying ready, staying in the gym and ready for any opportunity to come. Honestly, to so, play real basketball because that is my goal to play yeah. basketball. I, internet's cool, entertainment's cool, but that's fame is not what I'm, I really want to hoop. It's, yeah. Like you said, I love. I mean, it's, it's fun. yeah, it's it's it's. Uh, I understand exactly what you mean, but Definitely. let me let me let me walk you through. A little bit of like players, right? That uh, kind of how how tall are you? Um, I'm like five, 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 six, five, six, five, seven on paper. Okay. <laughs> I see, I did, yeah, I did see five, seven on Google, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna ask him, I'm gonna ask him, so I don't yeah. say nothing like that. But uh, let's go, let's 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 go through players who kind of had that similar size, like from, from six feet and under, right? Cool. I, I've I've been fortunate enough to play with some of them and play against some of them. Wow. So I had a guy, I had a kill car when I first got into the G League. Yeah. I had a kill car. When I tell you, I've never seen nobody so as like charismatic as a scorer. <laughs> no, it's no, no, it's no joke. Like, wow. You know, the, like the tapes you see, yeah. the, the in and out, the ladder movement, the bing, bing, the. The cross go all the way to the top, trying to dunk it, then just lay you lay up. It up yeah. Like I, that's him. It's real. I, that's him. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. real. And I and I saw it first hand in, in training camp when, when we did the G League training camp, mm -hmm. and he was just there, you know. And it was just like I don't know, like just like a how do you explain this? He was just like a a category by himself, you know, the way he played because he was like undersized. Yeah, for NBA, you know, like. Think about everybody. Everybody's like six, 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 seven. And yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. it's kind of it's time. And then I get to see Pierre Jackson. 
Another yeah. guy I love, man. Love this game. Wow. Played overseas, played with him in, in NBA everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you had the guys like Russ Smith. Mm. I don't okay. know if you know the names I'm saying. Yeah, but you, no, for sure. If you don't know them, go go and watch the clips. Watch for the sure. I'm scoring. I'll be working. Sorry to cut you. I'll be working yeah. out with a uh, Pierre. Well, not working. I'll be hooping with him in Vegas. Yes, we will be doing the little runs yeah. and stuff. But yeah, definitely you hooper, bro. Yeah, hooper. Then you, you get to see. I you know I didn't never get the chance to uh, play with Isaiah Z Thomas. Okay, or but I get the chance to watch him play. Yeah, and and you see guys like. Ready, man. You yeah. see what it like, and especially as yeah, like one of them, like special, just Definitely. special, special for sure. So don't, don't, so don't let nobody say nothing about your size mm -hmm. or anything like that. Now you just gotta, gotta put in the work. You gotta put in, you know, you gotta put in everything else. It comes to it, it's a whole package. You know, it's not what, only what you see. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a whole package. And basketball is changing mm -hmm. drastically. Mm -hmm. So you trust me, you just gotta stay on it, and you, you, you find your way. Definitely. I just want to, you know, throw those names no, out there. I appreciate it. For you to, like, you. Yes, sir. watch. And uh, kind of now, you know, obviously you can't mimic everybody's game, but kind of, like, yeah. get inspiration from motivation, you know? Definitely. I appreciate that. Great sure. players. Mm -hmm. So, did you ever feel like, man, this is hard right now? Like, man, this NBA, like, mm -hmm. this is, like, I got to find a different, not to find a different out, but mm -hmm. this is, like, this is not... Uh, an option for me right now. I say like, okay, what do I what do I do next? Mm. So yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, things have just came to me next. Like the NBA is something I've always been reaching for. Of course, I've had my uh, hiccups to where I've a uh, couple months I didn't go hard. That couple months I still in the gym every day. Yes. But like the way I work, I, like you know how we work yes. every day, all day, three four times in the gym, yes. and. Uh, but you know, I'd say for a couple a uh, couple months throughout my like life of working out, I like had a couple like hiccups to where I didn't work as hard. Still worked hard to a regular person, mm -hmm. but um, not to like someone trying to get to the league. But I've been grinding my whole life, so. But definitely, um, I say like the other things like the sponsorships come. They they came to me, and uh, it's not uh, so much of thinking what am I gonna do if I don't make it. It's just I'm I'm I've just I've never thought like that honestly. You shouldn't. You yeah. Shouldn't. I just I've, I just want to know because you 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 know you you you've took the the viral moments you've you've took all this uh uh having fans from a young age all this I want to say fame I want to say uh, media awareness all this all of these things and turned it into business. Yeah. Is that something that you see translating for you outside of the court? Mm, definitely. Uh, for sure. So, like, uh, we have a couple uh, brands, like the Prodigy brand. Uh, my dad has started. Uh, we started as a family. But um, definitely, like, you know, whether i a legend in the NBA or whether I never play in the NBA, I feel like uh, I want to take the brand to, you know, the next level and, you know, make it a, a brand for everybody. Uh, Prodigy brand. And, you know, if my dad were here, he could explain to you more about the Prodigy brand and what Prodigy means. We'd and, love to. We'd love to. Yeah. And, uh, but, um Pretty soon here, we're definitely taking Prodigy Brand to a different level and, you know, putting more money into it. And, uh, you know, because I have a lot of faith into it, in it, you know, in the name and the clothing and yes. the meaning behind it. And, and it's been uh, it's been uh, it's been out for a long time. So, yeah, definitely. That's uh, one of the things that, you know, we made into a business. But my dad's always had clothing brands and uh, stuff like that before. Like he has a thing called Hoops Inc. Like my dad's always been the business guy. OK, that's even, good. even before I was a. Uh, born probably like when i was two or three he had his own businesses and stuff so you know it's just um me personally i've uh i help a prodigy and stuff like that but man he's made it to where i just f focus on basketball focus on That's getting good. better so now i'm diving into you know trying to uh make sure my future's right and even oh, yours, you know what i'm saying trust me yours is like, successful definitely you're successful and now it's about you reaching your goals and maximize your, maximize your potential, you know? Yes, sir. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Thanasa Dukubo here, and you can stay up to date with all your Ada Dukubros shop needs by following us at Ada Dukubros. See all our products, lines, drops, and limited time gear coming your way. Ada Dukubros.shop. We're all bros. Thank you. Back to the analysis. Now, now, now we get to the section that uh, I call it uh, amazing facts, like facts that I read about okay. and then I write them down so I don't forget them. And then, 
you know, I want to see if you know him. Got you. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. Let me see. Don't lie. Let's see if you know him, <laughs> right? Okay. Did you know, right, that like across your lifetime, uh -huh. right, most people spend an average of a whole year on the, to on the toilet? I don't know that. I didn't know that. So throughout your whole life, basically, you spend <laughs> one year on the toilet sitting down. I might spend a couple years, I'll be honest, <laughs> if that's the case, because <laughs> people be begging me to get off the toilet. <laughs> wow, it, you just be chilling. You just be it's the phone. phone. Like, I'd be, like, answering, you know, DMs or answering a couple emails or texting friends back or I just Wait, be chilling. So, so you answer, like, DMs, you you, you text back? Or you uh, like uh, yeah, to some uh, people, if I see it and it's uh, positive, I'd definitely answer. Um, uh, I can't, bro. I try to sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, I have the... My, the the team and everybody mm -hmm. who like had on my social because I can't like it's so much when it becomes yeah, so much you can't definitely be, can't be on it mm -hmm. but I always go on it and try to like post up uh, and encourage people for and sure just kinda, like yeah you definitely can't can. answer each fan for sure not that's why that's what I'm saying social media is it's yeah. good it's a blessing yeah and at the same time you just gotta learn how to navigate it yeah for sure it's really important yeah, it okay can get people hurt for sure oh, yeah man. oh my god so let me let me let me hit you with the second uh, part of it right cool. And this has to do with snakes. Mm. Do you like snakes? You, you I right? don't. Me neither. I do not. I have a brand called Trust, uh, a designer brand that I want to, you know, push going forward called Trust None. That the logo is a, a snake with a sword through it, <laughs> with like blood come out of it. It's it's not violent. It's more like you know, it's a yeah. good thought towards it. But yeah. it's like you know, more like uh, you know, there's a lot of snakes out here in the world. You know, trying, oh, to, trying to get rid of okay, them. <laughs> okay. It's kind of weird that just because it's a snake that. Mm -hmm. They've uh, associated the word snake or the the, the, the snake that's on, as a serpent, like with the yes. with something bad, with something yes. sneaky, or with uh -huh. something, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of feel like it's just the way they move, probably. Yeah, I, I do wonder why. That is true. Yeah. So, did you know that they, they can predict earthquakes? Come, I am not even kidding. Come, they can predict dude, earthquakes like you, 75 <laughs> miles away. I'm, who, I'm, who are they I'm, telling I'm the news station? What are you, no, they, what do like, you mean? They, like sometimes they can't even sense like five day, like five days before it but happens. What are they doing though to to show you that they know? Like Man, how, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. They, it's not that they show you that they know, but they, it's it's a fact now. Uh, internet uh, people can actually go and, and look this up and let us know. Somebody's gonna have to tell me. <laughs> I don't understand that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's a fact, man. Wow. I'm sure you didn't know that. Yes, no. two out of two. Boom. That's ridiculous. I'm on the road today, man. <laughs> I'm on the road today. So I'm gonna hit you with the, I'm hit you with the, with the last one. It's kind of yucky, but okay. Uh -oh. So did you know, all right, <laughs> that during your whole lifetime, you produce the saliva, like you produce so much saliva uh -huh. that you could fill like 50 bathtubs. 50 bathtubs? 50. Five zero. I definitely didn't know that, but I'm trying to imagine that. That's ridiculous. That's. Ridiculous. Do you think? Do you? How, what's your What's your first reaction to? It's confusion, really. Like, like what the? <laughs> what you, Fifty bathtubs. That's ridiculous. I don't know where does the saliva go. Like we, we just swallow, swallow they, it. Like they just like. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, and I, and I was like, ain't no way. Yeah, but it, it is true. That's but a fact true. for real. Yes, it is true, and they we can we can check it out too. So. <laughs> I hold on, hold on. I'm gonna hit you. I'm hit you. you got to because no. I gotta know one. Oh my god! Yeah, I got give you. me a I'll, couple more. <laughs> man, I'll, I'll let you know. So, so now this is like random questions, right? Yeah. You know, there's no right answer, and I just want to see your thought. I want to see your thought process, right? Cool, cool. Okay. Is there is there any is there an app that like you hate but you still use? Mm. Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> Snapchat. Yeah, I hate, oh. I hate it. Cause you know why? Like a, me, I, I mean, I can't. Just, I don't want to get nobody in trouble, nobody mad no, no, out no, no. there. But no, the, I mean, obviously, this, first of all, this is a clean po podcast. Yeah, you know. But if you if you say something, I'm <laughs> no. If you say something inappropriate, I'll, I'll probably stop you. But no, do you yeah, no, nah, I got nothing <laughs> bad for it. Um, Snapchat is more like you know, I'm on it because that's how I contact certain people. Okay, that's the only reason why I have Snapchat. Um. But other people's reasons for Snapchat would be my problem <laughs> is why I don't like it. Because, like, you know, um, if you're in a relationship and you're a female, you have Snapchat, I have no idea why. You know, but that's my opinion. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, oh, that's the Snapchat. Oh. So the app is Snapchat. Ah, so that's but the, if you're a man and have Snapchat, you can have it for different reasons. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it gets the female, too. 
It depends circumstances. Yeah, I don't guess. know. We, we can't hate people with double standards. No, it goes. You you can't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, would, I would say it goes with the human being, not the man and girl, yeah. like girl and guy. More, yeah. more of the. No, human. definitely it's true. Definitely, but I mean, <laughs> why I have it is to conversate with certain people. <laughs> hey man, hey, hey, don't, hey, don't, hey, hey man, don't put me on it. Or, <laughs> or like you know, certain people that have uh, androids. I'm not texting a green. The green. I'm not texting a, someone green. I gotta. Get Snapchat because it makes more sense for me. The yeah, so you're an iPhone guy, then? Oh, definitely. Damn, yeah. yeah. My mom is totally against iPhones, but yeah, my mom's I'm a, yeah, never I'm a, had I'm a now that, that's gonna look I'm, like I'm doing a promo about Google Pixel, but <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, you know, not, I'm not saying I'm just either. I've always had every phone, and obviously mm. businesses, you, you know, company businesses and everything. We yeah, kind of have different things, but mm -hmm. you know, I'm not against the green or whatever. <laughs> sometimes it's no, some, sometimes it's weird. You know, if you get like, if you, if if I go to take somebody and they're like, why why is your message mm -hmm. green or vice versa? It just makes me feel like it never got there. That's all. <laughs> that's just what makes me feel. Yeah. Oh, because uh, iMessage has the delivered. Yeah, it has delivered, gotcha. and um, it also like, I don't know. It just depends who you're talking to. Like, of course, my mom's green. I talk to her. You know. Yes. Okay. You know, but if you're talking to like a female you're interested to or something like, you, you should use like, uh, no, WhatsApp. Snapchat. Uh, WhatsApp? You know the, WhatsApp. Yeah, I know about WhatsApp. There. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Cool. Like overseas, it's kind of an overseas app. So. Yeah, yep, definitely. Okay, I'm gonna hit. I'm a, actually another one. Now that we on the kind of like relationship type uh, mm -hmm. topic, what is it? What What is a lie or exaggeration you've ever said to like impress your like your crush? Lie or exaggeration? It doesn't have to be a lie. It's just something you just like over the top said. Like hey, you know. now, everyone's done this, right? Like every, okay. Hey, they'll say I'm, everyone I'm, now. I'm, I'm trying to think, like okay. because I'm not sure. Something you Maybe uh, I'll have my driver pick us up. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> Something <love> like that. <laughs> I'm like, that's my, oh my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. And you were like, oh, you just have a driver pick us up? Yeah, who, who no, was it? damn well, my dad's about to drop me off. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, bro. <laughs> oh my God, you're the best, man. Oh, man. <laughs> my dad was like, why are you doing that, man? <laughs> <laughs> He's trying. You're trying, man. You really, really like the person. Why? Would you yeah. Not, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm gonna hit you with this one. Mm -hmm. What superpower do did you would you wish to have? Mm. What would it be? Probably to read minds. Not that I care about what people think all the time, but just uh, just know certain things. Know like who to be around. You know what people think. Mm. Of, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah. I say be a mind reader. That's mine. Mm. Mind reader. That we that could translate to basketball. Yeah. Great too. You'd be like, oh, yeah. shoot. oh uh -huh. you about to pass up. Uh -huh. Steal. Oh, you about to shoot block. I'm not sure if I could ask you this, but what about you, man? Well, a superpower? What would your superpower be? My superpower, I would <laughs> love if I could no, I've seen this movie. Like if I could like if you're feeling sad, like I could touch you and mm -hmm. you'd be like, oh, you're not feeling nothing. You're not like uh -huh. take the like the sadness yeah. off people. Because that makes you, you know, and obviously it makes me feel good in general. Like I, I yeah. really want people to be happy, and I, and I see the world. I, I, I've been, you know, I've been through a lot of things in my life, and mm -hmm. kind of see my with my family and my brothers how happy we are. Yeah, and I would love to give them the same feeling. Like I mm. see them, yeah, and I always kind of try. People always say this about me, like, man, whenever I meet this guy, I always feel like, yeah, I always feel like dope, and uh, you know, yeah, this guy sure. is always great. But like to really try and like go and. Like you know, take your sorrows and your sadness away, and be able to help you in your journey. Yeah. That would be that would be great for me. That tells a lot about yourself, man. That's yeah. that's views. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate I'm you. Not oh, sure man. if anyone thought about that superpower. That's a great one. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> think, but it's a great one. I mean, I mean, I mean, I might be naive, but that's how. No, nah, that's, how that's I a think. great one, man. Yeah, I changed mine <laughs> to that. <laughs> uh, oh man, we're getting to kind of towards the end of the show. I know you. Cool. You know we're. Been here, I don't know for how long, but man, I've, you know, I know I've learned mm -hmm. so many things about you and how, like, you know, this could impact people's lives and early young age. You know, is there anything, is there any any quote that you think about or that keeps you going every day? You know, and I don't want to put you in the spot, but no, you know, yeah, you, I mean, uh, um, it's in the Bible, Second Corinthians five seven. Uh, we walk for we walk by faith, not by sight. So, you know, I, I, how I see the verses, um, basically, you know, no matter what you see, like what's going on right now, we, you know, I still have an end goal. I still have faith that, you know, what I thought was the kid, when I when I dreamt of, it's still going to happen, you know. Yes, sir. So that's what definitely keeps me, like, going. That's my father's favorite uh, Bible verse as well. 
he even had it on the side of his truck, like uh, when he had basketball leagues. But yeah, that's what keeps me going. That and uh, you know, um, letting like letting down like uh, kids that really look up to me because I know there's a lot of kids like that. I, daily, I go to the mall and like I see it. People walk around. I see how people really actually like watch me and are inspired, and they let me know that. So I would hate to just stop and be in. This would be end. The end. Like I would hate for this to be the end for me. Like just, it won't. You know what I'm saying? Because it won't be the end. A lot of kids look up to me, you. and I would love to inspire them and continue to do so. No, I mean, Definitely. no. The, the way I would say is that be somebody that your family's gonna be proud of. Yeah. And live, you know, your life with certain rules. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, some a lot of people come through your life and try to change you, and like, man, you should think about this, you mm. think about that. You know, different different things. You know, that's how it is. That's how life is. Mm. But you know, just stay true to yourself and remember, all these people like admire you and inspired mm. by you. They love you for a certain reason. Yeah. It's not by, you know, it's not by you going viral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, if viral moment only lasts, it's called viral. Yeah. Wow. For a little bit. Yeah. You know, people sense. still follow you to this day. Mm. You have you have something, bro. For sure. You know, and mm -hmm. and, and stick with it. Yes, sir. Ah. Oh. Thank, thank, I thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you for coming in. And uh, man, this is it. Uh, we're at the end of the show, the Nile show. Thank you guys for tuning in for the last time to, to watch or listen. Thank you guys so much for your support. Uh, if you want to watch the social clips, you probably watch it at the Nassis, uh underscore Ante43. Uh, if you want to watch some of the other social, if you want to follow Julian, you can go with Julian Newman on Instagram and every other uh, social platform. Yes, and if you want to watch more of this podcast, the whole thing, you, know, you can either watch the visuals at the, at the Cubros TV. Mm -hmm. And if you want to just listen to it, shoot, like I was always saying, whatever you get your podcast from, <laughs> we're in every platform. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. So. Thank you. Analysis is recorded at No Studios, Milwaukee's creative hub and production studio.